What is up all of my beautiful dudes and dudettes? We are here at YCS Niagara 2024 and we have a beautiful deck profile for you guys. Can you tell your name? Uh, my name is Keegan and I brought to YCS Niagara Laval Snake Eye Azamina. We've got Laval in the year 2024. This is my legacy. This is wonderful. <laughs> this is glorious. Record aside, did you at least have fun? This is definitely a deck that I've had a lot of fun with, and I think if I was able to get a bit more testing in, um, I think I probably could have done a bit better in the main event. But I had a whole lot of fun with it, for sure. Excellent, excellent. So let's just hop right into the main deck. So getting started, we'll go for the Laval stuff. So first and foremost, we got our Handmaiden, we've got Sprite, we've got Lakeside Lady, and two Archer. Um, this is just kind of the ratio I ended up winding down to. Um, I think, if anything, I might want to up uh, Sprite just by one more. Um, helps out with the extra deck plays, and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, we're playing free Molten Conduction Field. Of course. The Triple Rekindling, because of course. Of course and Soul there's a, the Dual Terminal Oh yeah, this is, this is Dual Terminal. The Dual Terminals were in the mail. Uh, ignore these. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right. pretend, edit over these. These were Dual Terminal, trust, trust. <laughs> um, but I made sure I got as much dual terminal of this as I could as well. Good, good. Um, same with this, this would be a dual terminal if it showed up. Excellent. Were you ever able to act, uh, activate Dust Flame Blast at all during the tournament? There was a point in a win -mat where I could have, but I held on to it for too long and then missed my opportunity to. But it would have been crazy, it would have been the whole board wipe and I would have probably been fine. But I just kind of held on to it for too long, so um, when you're in a good position to do it, just do it, honestly. Would you um, like to explain what Dust Flame Blast does for those who just don't know? Yeah, so Dust Flame Blast, you banish every Laval from your graveyard. So all of these, plus whatever's in the extra. Uh, well, not whatever's in the extra, but like, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and then it just pops cards up to the amount that you banished. Um, so it can be a full board wipe on the opponent's field, and if you, for some reason, want to pop your own cards, like, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, Ideally, you're going to be searching this off of Thrust, which is right here. Um, so it's just a nice little punish that you can do to your opponent if you get hand trapped at all. Uh, it's really cool. Were you ever able to use Lakeside Ladies Effect to pop some pesky back row, or did that just never come up? Uh, it did come up in uh, another win mat earlier as well. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, it's pretty handy. It's pretty handy for sure. Um, this, the attack gain, unfortunately didn't really come up too much, but like, <laughs> it's funny. It's just like, you're making your board. All right, so arbitrary gain a 700. Did Archer's Firelock ever um, give you any difficulty with any of the Azamina cards? Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go into the Firelock for him. Um, there wasn't an opportunity where I needed to extend even further. Uh, I was usually getting to my board before then, but this recursion would be nice. Um, and there's some instances where I can shuffle back, um, you know, uh, Princess and Raging Phoenix in the extra deck. Mm -hmm. So I can just go for that line and go for a kill there. Um, so it could come up, but from my experience, not too much. But we also have some extra deck mods just to play around the uh, lock when it does happen. Excellent, excellent. Um, that's the Laval side of things. On to the, first of all, you know, we got bonfires, gotta play them. And Snake Eyes. Dia Bellstar, one Dragon, one Snake Eyes Dia Bellstar. Uh, I'm on two Oak. Um, I find having this as follow-up is pretty helpful. Um, and just having another way to, you know, other search targets really, other ways to go for OSS, pretty handy. Uh, one Poplar, one Ash, and Triple Wanted. I'm on double OSS as well. Um, the reason you want to play double OSS is if you are on the Azamina stuff, this is a nice um, a nice way to get the Snake Eye graveyard effect to go off as well um, for OSS. Um, and it's also another way you can fusion summon. Um, it's pretty handy. It's pretty handy. Um, then finally, we got the Divine Temple. Um, this you're usually just going to be setting her. Um, and it sets from Graveyard too, so that, that did come up earlier in the, one of the Winamats as well. Um, but this is pretty standard. Um, this maybe not so much, but the rest of this is pretty yeah, standard. Yeah, the double OSS, the double Oak, those are the only things that, you know, don't line up with, with the normality of it, but... Yeah, 
<laughs> it's pretty solid, and honestly, this worked out really well for me throughout the event. Um, this was usually where a lot of the points of interaction were being laid upon, was on these mm. uh, Snake Eye cards. Um, although, every time they see a Molten Conduction, they're just like, what, huh? Laval's? It's crazy. It's so much fun. You're just like, I'm about to pop off. <laughs> I'm about to go crazy. Um, On to the Azumina stuff. It's just two cards. Uh, one Deception and one Hollowed Azumina. Um, ideally, I'd want to be on two, but my friend was only able to loan me one because that's all I pulled. Um, so ideally two of this, but you can play with one as well, and it works just fine. Um, this can send this, or the OSS, um, or also uh, Wanted as well. I never got a chance to use that for the Wanted, but the OSS and this definitely came in clutch. Um, and the two targets I'm playing for that are Moo, which searches a Sinful Spoils card, and Silva, which is a uh, Omni Decay. Pretty cool. Nice, nice. Alrighty. And then... Next up is my crossout package. Uh, first of all, Killed by the Grave, um, kind of helpful. Um, these were my crossout designators, and my three targets were Fuelos, Nib, and Shifter. Um, were you ever able to cross out a Fuelos? I was not. Um, uh. I, the, in my first round, um, I saw Fuelos Shifter, which was fun. <laughs> um, but I was like, I'm not really going to be able to use the shifter the way I want to, because I also got to play through the shifter. Uh -huh. So it's it's kind of tricky. Um, but in theory, um, you know, if you're ever going to get, uh, if you get shiftered, you know, you can just cross out that. Um, or, I mean, if you get shifter foolost, kind of just got to hope you have both of these. Otherwise, hit whichever one's going to hurt you more. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of tricky. Um, Nib, never got nibbed, which was nice. Um, loved to not have that happen to me, which was, which was great. Um, that's the cross out package. At any point, did you cross out any like Snake Eyes cards or any of the Azamina package? Um, in practice, that would be a good thing to do. I didn't get a chance to myself because I didn't really see cross out throughout this event. Cross out at any point, okay. Um, Honestly, I'd definitely be making a few changes to this list. Um, probably, if anything, maybe citing the crossout package so I can have either less cards in the main or just a more impactful um, side deck. But um, on to the last few cards. We've got Foolish, Jet Synchron, Thrust, and Talents. Um, I would rather be on two Thrust, but I've only got the one. Uh -huh. um, Foolish is always nice, and Jet Synchron is just another OSS target. It's a nice little um, tuner monster as well, so that way you can synchro summon even more mm -hmm. uh, in the event that you aren't able to like, get full value off of the um, Laval Handmaidens. Yeah. Uh, but that is the main deck, 45, onto uh -huh. the extra, unless you got anything you want to add. No, yeah, let's, let's check out the extra. All right, so starting with the Link monsters, we got Anima, IP, SP, Kita, Promethean Princess, World Sea Dragon Z Atlantis, and Salmon Great Raging Phoenix. Uh -huh. um, Normal, standard lineup. About a standard lineup, if anything, I would want to figure out how to fit Amblo Whale into the mix. Um, okay. Because often I find myself just not really having too much of an end board in the link side of things. Mm -hmm. So I think Amblo Whale would be a good one to put in. I don't quite know. Kita never really came up, but it's also, you know, nice in practice, uh, just in case you haven't gone through your line of Promethean Princess yet. So, it's kind of tricky, but I think it's up to the up to the viewer on what they'd want to do for that. Yeah. Um, this deck is very malleable, I feel. Um, it's really just not an engine where you can kind of shimmy a few things around. Yeah. Um, on to, we'll, we'll get the fusions out of the way again. Once again, that's Mu and Illa for the Azumina stuff. And onto the synchros. So we played one formula synchron because one plus one yep. equals a draw. Uh, for our Laval extra deck, we've got Laval Dragon to search whatever we don't end up going through on the um, Handmaiden train. Uh -huh. uh, we've got X Lord 
Um, that's this is one you'd make in the situation where you're fire locked, or if you are in a time situation, this is also a nice one you can go into as well. Mm -hmm. um, pop a card, burn for a thousand. Uh, specifically, a monster effect. Anyway, um, this one's also a good time card. Uh, this came up. <laughs> Very fun. Um, that baited out a cross domination, I think, which was fun. Nice, nice. Uh, and then finally, we've got Axel Stardust and Bastille the Spotter. Um, in the ideal end board, you're going to be able to banish a card off the SP. Uh -huh. And then that card that you banish off the SP will turn this into a monster negate. Although, in theory, you're also going to have a card banished in your grave as well, or from your grave as well. Uh -huh. um, so it should turn on both effects of Bastille the Spotter. Um, when I was able to go for the full combo, it was usually this Potter, uh, da, 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 Zelantis, with the these two engrave. SP, uh, after going through an IP, plus whatever else is on field that I use for it. And then Illa as well. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty solid end board, all things considered. Um, and I think with a bit more tweaking, I think this deck can be even better. Um, and how did people react once they realized that they were playing against a Laval variant of Snake Eyes Azamina? They were hyped. They were they were excited to see what I could do with it. And honestly, I'm well. I wasn't able to do it too much in the main event. In the side events, when I did play uh, with the deck, um, people were always like, "All right, I'm in." And it always it was always a fun game, regardless of how it ended up. For me. Is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers before we close out? Um. I think this deck can be really good. Um, I think as long as you are able to, I, I mean, one, afford the deck. Uh, I'd, I was not. I'm just borrowing most of this, like I said earlier. Uh, thank you, my buddy Robert. <laughs> um, I think this deck has a lot of potential for different Snake Eyes variants, and obviously I don't think you're going to have to worry about any of your Lavals getting uh, banned anytime soon for this. Um, but yeah, this, is a, this has been a really fun list, and this has been a really fun event as well. So, give it a try. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day here at YCS Niagara. Of course. Thank you so much.